I, I, I can watch them. <laughs> Excellent. Hello. I think we are live now. <laughs> um, this is, I think it's Potter Sesh number six. Yes, and we had one so session there, so it's, it's our seventh live stream. We are dialing things in as we go. I am Carrie Sumter with Alpha Glow Industries. Robin is helping me here, and this is David, also known as iShot JR, and uh, he's also helping co-host and move the conversation along this uh, this time. So happy to have you here, David. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> um, I was just saying, like we're, you know, we're doing different things with camera setups each time. Uh, you can see that we now have, you know, our three cameras, and we have David. So uh, we think we have everything working. If something doesn't work, well, please forgive us, and uh, we'll we'll try to you know keep on going. All right. So and please like say hello in the chat if you're there. It's always fun to see familiar faces and people and stuff. Um, hey, David, send him out a tweet that we're live. Oh, that would be that would be fantastic if you could. If you could aid and assist and, and help in that in that way. Awesome. Hello, Sawara Link. How's it going? How is it going? Ah, so we, we are here. We have some cameras. Everything's good. We think we're just not touching anything because we're going to jinx ourselves. If we touch <laughs> All right. So this is traffic light take two. So I think I'm going to do the little demo again. So let me go over there. Um, yeah, you wouldn't mind making it big. Hello again. Hi. Um, so this is the Traffic Lights project that we've had going for a while. We have a very simple Simon Says game um, that we programmed for it. Put that in. Put that in. Turn this guy on. Okay. So these were surplus traffic lights that we got at a place up in San Jose called Excess Solutions. Uh, it's like one of the uh, only surplus stores in the Bay Area now that's left. There were some went out of business. Excess Solutions bought something else. But yeah, I was talking to some people today about like how awesome of a store it is. It's just like kind of electronics tinker heaven. You go in there and they're just like rows and rows and aisles of stuff like components galore surface mount through hole computer parts like some furniture some stereo stuff and surplus traffic lights for 13 dollars each so really like couldn't afford to not get these so uh yeah what do you do with surplus traffic lights other than turn them on and off well you you know make a little simon says game out of them so I'm going to kind of give you a little tour of the Simon Says game. And I will switch cameras here. Pardon me if I'll just a second. Okay. I have a quick terminology question. Yeah. When you say traffic light, am I looking at three traffic lights now? You are. In Got fact. It. When I think of traffic lights, I always think of the whole unit. So I was confused when you said each and I was like, there's only one there, but that's three. <laughs> no, each each one was sold individually. Yeah, uh, the the red, the green, the red, the yellow, and the green were all individual. And I think that they had arrows too, which I'm kind of tempted to go back and see if they still have. So this here is our game setup. So we have the buttons, which are set up to mirror the traffic lights that you press. And then we have this Arduino controlling it all. And I set it up, I showed you last week, I'm going to here, get my, get my uh, setup here so that I can zoom in on you here. All right, in the right orientation, there we go. So um, this is a Leonardo clone and it's like, it has oh, super cool artwork, right? Yeah, one, I've <laughs> seen that on Twitter, I've never seen, I didn't, I don't know anyone that's got one that's great. Yeah, I got a few of them off of Amazon a couple of years ago, and they're just super cool. Like, I love them so much. Like, usually I try to buy genuine Arduino stuff, but when somebody, like, comes up with some super cool artwork and stuff like that, then, like, that's that's worth that's worth some love and a purchase. Like, yeah, they really kind of made it their own. I saw that it was pink, and I was like, what's going on? 
I, yeah. I don't think that's a spark fun thing. It's not oh, rapid. Oh yeah. No, it's not a spark fun thing, but it is on a yeah. spark fun holder, which um, has a spot for it basically just has a spot with um standoffs and holes in the right spot for an Arduino Uno ish form factor, which the Leonardo conforms to, and um a spot for a wireless breadboard. That's a uh, seriously cool uh micro USB go in there. Oh <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> Hard to see right now, but it is it is very bling. It it has has lights coming up it. Yeah. Um, that was a that was a random um, AliExpress purchase, I believe, I like because I was looking for cool USB cables. But the thing about this one <laughs> that you have to remember is it's a power only cable. Oh no, one of the dreaded power only USB cables. Uh, it but it's cool, easy to it's remember. Okay. Oh, what's that? When it looks that cool, it, it can be a power only. Exactly. That's what I. That's what I said, and it's like obviously different from every other USB cable that I have. And you know, there's even room to write on the connector. Power only. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So what else is going on here? So we have um, we have the Arduino, and we have signals and power broken out from the Arduino. This is this is just breaking stuff out. And then we have output signals going to relays because these traffic lights are 120 volt traffic lights. <laughs> so, um, you know, we can't hook up a 120 volt signal directly to the Arduino um, or 120 volt power directly to the Arduino. So that, that would be bad. It would not like that. So we use relays to control higher voltage signals with lower voltage signals. So we have um, power to each of the traffic lights being broken up and going through each relay. And uh, I'm switching line and neutral is the one that is wired straight through. And then these two terminal blocks are just um, breaking out the, the 120. So everything is relative. I mean, I still have to be kind of careful. This is not like fully super duper insulated, but it's it's relatively um safe from accidental touches both of those terminal blocks have uh plastic covers over them and we've been pretty careful uh with the wire insulation going like straight to the terminal blocks so basically like the most dangerous spot is like right on the relay where those screw terminals are exposed you could accidentally touch something there so this is really like just a prototype setup <laughs> We are working on making this uh, safe and better for like a more permanent installation. What is, uh, that, what is the honeycomb material or is that just 3D printed? Oh, this was like a 3D printed test fixture that uh, for something else that didn't work out. So it ba basically we keep stuff around like that around to just have scrap plastic. So we just mounted it cool. to it. What's yeah. That? Yep. Um, is there a uh, reason yeah. the Leonardo versus just the Uno? Is do you need the thirty-two U four for something? Um, no, no, you don't. Uh, basically, it was because we bought these boards because of the artwork, <laughs> and we wanted to use them. So, could be an Uno, could be a Leonardo, could be pretty much whatever Arduino you have lying around. Uh, one more quick interjection, uh, a yep. comment. Do you have a fuse slash circuit breaker on the? 120 volts AC power line. Nah. <laughs> uh, that is coming soon in the next revision. <laughs> Stay tuned for solder sash number eight, seven. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so the other thing that, the, that this little board breaks out other than the relay signals there are the um, button signals. So the button signals are well, they're inputs, but each button actually has an LED inside of it as well. So there's an LED output to each button, um, the input signal from the buttons, and then the output signal to the relays. And so what we're wanting to do here is we're wanting to break up the control half from the power half. So we want the power half to basically stay with the traffic lights and then we want the control half to just kind of be a box that you can carry with you or put on a table or something like that while you, you know, put the traffic lights, like, say, on top of the refrigerator because there's a really good spot for them there. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're adding, 
were like hacking into a key fob, you know, just one of those little like garage clicker things. And um, so it's a four button key fob that we're hacking into and we're going to wire it in between the, um, the Arduino and the relay output signals. And so the, um, the switch part of the key fob is the transmitter and that will transmit the relay signals. And then we'll put the receiver um, you know, right next to the relays and that will receive the relay signals and turn everything on and off. Um, so I'll do a little demo of the game here for you, just so you can see kind of how it works. Um, we have it in demo mode right now, uh, meaning that there are only, only, let me, let me change cameras so that I can actually see stuff and, you know, not be like out of frame and all of that kind of stuff. Hey, again. Um, so, uh, uh, uh. Uh, so we have it set up so that there are only, uh, so that there's only a sequence of five. So the way that a Simon Says game goes, in case this is new, uh, is that a light flashes once, a color of a light, and then you have to hit the button that corresponds to the color of light that you just saw. And then it'll add another light to the sequence, and so then you do the first light and then the second light. And then as long as you got the right answer, then it'll add a third light to the sequence. So it keeps repeating um, the lights that it's shown you before and adding one to the sequence every single time. And we also have it speeding up as it goes along, which is hard to see when you only have five, um, five lights in the total sequence, but, uh, but it's better when, it, when you have like 10 or more than it really like starts picking up as you go along and you know, it kind of, gets your heart racing and like, oh no, it's going faster. And it's funny how that really like puts your mind in sort of this, uh, this like more, more excited and frantic mode, you know? Um, but yeah, so right now it's set up to five and I'm gonna start, you press any button to start right now and then you just repeat what it does. Uh, and then at the end, it will, if you got everything right and it's five and the game is ended, it'll flash the green light three times. And at any time in the middle, if you get something wrong, then it'll flash the red light three times. And it, there's also a timeout. So if like I press one button and then I'm talking to you, uh, it'll time out and flash the red light three times. So you only have, I don't know, I think maybe five or 10 seconds to actually start pushing buttons. All right, so enough talking, let's do it. Red and green. Red, green, red. Red, green, red, green. <laughs> red, green, red, green, red. Yay, we won. So uh, we're using just a, the random function um, in Arduino, which just starts at an arbitrary point at a list of randomly generated numbers. Um, so it is, it doesn't mean it's non-repetitive. Like sometimes you'll get it doing the same light three times in a row. It, it doesn't mean it's not repetitive, but it is random. So, and like, like that sequence, it never even did the yellow one. So, you know, that's just sometimes the way it goes. <laughs> so what, what is the, uh, in the non-demo mode, what is the parameters? Um, it's the same so it thing. It goes on forever or? No, it doesn't. Well, we, we have you able to set the length of the sequence. Um, forever isn't really a game if there's no way of winning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can set, you know, you can set it to whatever number you want within reason. I'm sure there's an upper limit due to the way that we've coded it at this point in time. <laughs> But I'd have, to, I'd have to look it up to remember what that is. <laughs> 255, maybe. Yeah. Or 32,767, maybe. <laughs> it, it might be that, too. <laughs> Some power of two, yeah. minus one, is definitely <laughs> definitely in there. But um, but right now, it's actually like a little bit difficult when you go to 10, at least for us. <laughs> maybe our memories just suck. Yeah. But, but it is. it does get kind of hard at around 10. Um, um, I had a question okay. about the uh, the enclosure. That's yeah. kind of cool looking. Where did that come from? Ooh, Robin should take that question. 
Because she's the one that built it. <laughs> My dad built it. Oh, but you helped a lot. <laughs> but no, you did all of the, I mean, you did it from scratch. You did all mm -hmm. of the routing of the wood, cutting and circles. Yeah. What, um, what special tool did you use for the circles? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it was, was it like a jigsaw? Was it a jigsaw? I think so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then he added um little rubber gaskets. Yeah. On there to kind of have a nice, nicer looking seal. Seal. Mm -hmm. Nice. It looks no, like a, it looks, it looks, looks like, like a high end audio accessory or something. It looks like a high end audio. <laughs> Uh, so um, this particular um, this this particular one is brought to you by the beer coherence. There we go, coherence, oh. <laughs> because that is what we were struggling for. It's coherence, <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty it's pretty good. It's a California pale ale. I'm not sure exactly what makes it California. Maybe the type of hops or something. Uh, only five point five percent alcohol. So even if I finish this whole thing by the end of the session, I should still be able to solder. <laughs> Since it is a full pint, you know, not one of these American, you know, yeah, well down pints. Tall boy or girl. <laughs> Tall can. Tall can. All right. So, what we're looking at here on the table is the guts of the key fob. And I'll show you what it looks like first. So, this is what it looks like. Um, Show you a few more things. So we have the key fob on one side, and then the receiver on the other side. And so basically, every time you press one of these buttons, uh, a different uh, one of these different inputs is um, is triggered on the receiver. And um, and yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool. So you just have um, ground and five volts on this side. And then you have one, two, three, four, you know, different, I guess they're outputs. Um, four different outputs that are triggered according to four different buttons. So, and then I, they have another pin on here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It says DT um, threshold or something. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that's used for, but uh, I don't think we need to put anything on it, I hope. So we're just going to hook up the ground and the five volts. And then I am guessing that D0, D1, and D2 correspond to A and B. <laughs> so we'll try to hook up those. We'll hook up those three to the relays and um, and see if they correspond to the ATC button here. Is this um, 433 hmm. megahertz? Or what, can, what is this transmitting on? Do we know? Uh, it's says 315 slash 4.7 M. So 4.7 megahertz seems kind of high, but I don't know. That's kind I, of... I mean, 315 kilohertz sounds about right, maybe for like an open frequency band. But QC path, hey, that's important. <laughs> Oh, I found something. Uh, it might be 315 megahertz is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going through. I'm going through the comments now. So our links is saying that like thirteen dollars was like, yeah, pr a pretty good price for each of those traffic lights. Yeah, I, I thought so too. That that was like a screaming deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, and the USB cable is also fun. How it's like how they. Uh, so yeah, it's, that's that's all a cool thing. So I, I showed you, I showed this a little bit last week, but I'm gonna go over it again a little bit. So the um, it's kind of cool how this key fob is put together. So this is one that we took apart, and um, it was pretty easy. We just like pried pried the two halves of the enclosure apart with like a little screwdriver. There was was hardly anything to it, and you here. And so there's a board inside of it like this. Um, there were batteries inside of here, which we took out for right now. And then 
the system snap together like that. So it's pretty cool because when you first take it apart, you'll notice that this um, silicon piece is uh, forms a nice seal. So uh, you know it's it has some protection from like dust and debris and probably like light water spray water going going in there. And then when you take the board out, you'll notice that this is actually all one silicon piece that also acts as actuators for each of the buttons that are on board. So um, each of these, like there's another plastic piece in here, but this is the this is the button piece. And it's one piece, but it's very, very uh, loosely kept together by these like thin, thin little plastic ribs there. And that makes it so that each one can individually three of the other ones. So that just lays in there like that. And then um, these little button shapes go into the recesses and into the plastic piece so that when you um, push the plastic piece down through, um, through the silicon, these little, yeah, you can see that um, each button has one of these like little plugs underneath it. And this plug is actually what makes contact with the stone and the stone on the circuit board. So I thought that was pretty cool how like all one piece kind of uh, acts as the actuators and as the little seal around it. So then on the board, these are the dome actuators and they're they're not actually soldered to the board or anything. They're actually stuck to this piece of uh, like thick kind of uh, tape, kind of like a piece of stacked plastic, really kind of thick, or just tape. So they're all stuck to the piece of tape like that. And so um, what happens is uh, when you press them they kind of like flatten out a little bit and the middle of the dome makes contact with the middle um, of the makes contact with the um, middle pad right there and then through the dome itself it conducts and makes contact with the outer circle of the pad there so usually you know when it's not depressed it's open the middle isn't connected to anything and then when it's depressed, the middle and the outer ring are And um, I probed around on this board and I found that these buttons are actually connecting um, positive voltage. So a lot of times buttons will connect, uh, will essentially like connect um, ground, but it's actually the positive voltage that's like being broken up there. And there's a there's a pull down resistor instead of a pull up resistor on the other side of the button. So yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, while we were talking, I looked it up, and the VT pin apparently will go high if any of the pins are activated. Oh, nice. So that's nice. That's. So yeah, so a little a little indicator to tell you like yes, there's there's been a button press. Yeah, you could have like an LED that comes on for just any kind of message receipt. Yeah, that makes sense because there is an LED on this board that does that, that basically comes on. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, that might actually be kind of cool to um, to add at some point, just like little indicator, just so that you can see that like, yes, yeah, signals are being received. Latch check. Oh, 315 megahertz for key fog, huh? Nice. Thanks, Bob, for that information. Um, cool. So, yeah, there we go. That's it. Oh, it has a date on it. 6-13-2019. <laughs> I guess that's when the board was designed. Um, so yeah. Oh, another kind of interesting thing, too, is that the, the you might be like, oh, well, where's the antenna for this key fob? Something that, like, you know, pulls out or anything. Um, the antenna is this trace that's, like, going around mm -hmm. the entire board there's like a little cutout for the led there but um yeah pretty sure that that's the that's the radiator trace that's the antenna um and then the other thing is that this came with not one but two batteries 
in theory. And um, so what that means is that this guy is running off of voltage that's like closer to like six, seven volts instead of uh, three volts, which is great for us because um, the Arduino runs off of five volts. So we can just grab our five volts from the Arduino and not have to deal with any kind of level shift or anything. Or at least that's the theory. <laughs> we, we shall see when we put it into practice. Um, cool. So, oh, can I measure the length of the antenna trace in millimeters? Yeah, let's see, we can. Um, okay, I can, I can use it using, I can measure it using this very cool oh. ruler. Don't worry, this was one of the ones that, uh, was like a little bit of a cosmetic second, which is why I have that thing right there. I'm actually not sure why it was a cosmetic second. Um, because the circuit board house, like, you know, we didn't pay for electrical testing <laughs> um, for these, because obviously they're not uh, actually functional circuit boards. But, um, but yeah, I couldn't figure out why, like, what was wrong with this one, but whatever. This, this is our shop one that we use. But anyway, uh, so roughly in millimeters, the long side is eh, maybe like 40 one millimeters and well, the short side is like mm, 22 but maybe like a little bit longer because it kind of makes the uh, dog by the led so that jog and it's all on 45 degrees but jog is roughly like mm, three millimeters long <laughs> yes, they have a lot of there. Something that you will be getting in the mail very soon, Bob. Thank you for your order. Nice. We actually got um, a few orders this past week from, from friends and, and people who've been following us. Thank you very much. We appreciate every single one of those. And we we still like do little, yeah, we got an order from Cindy kind of dance. So it, it totally makes our day. Thank you. Um, so yeah, where was I? We got like 41 millimeters on the long side, like 22 plus maybe like six-ish on the short side. And um, there's really only one short side. The other goes pretty much straight into components on either side. So there's maybe an extra two, uh, three millimeters, an extra five millimeters on the short side. So let's see, it's like 82 like uh 10 and that's like 28 times 2 like 56 i think so you add all that shit together and you get like uh, 13 14 148 ish millimeters 148 150 millimeters is there some kind of calculation like it should be you know does the does the millimeters translate directly to the hertz or what is there there's got to be some kind of there are there there are um calculations um is it an easy one <laughs> can, yeah it's not too bad like like wavelength is is pretty directly related to um frequency so like one over one over frequency is wavelength or something like that um it's been a while since my rf classes so i'd have to like look that, that shit up in order to dial it in but yeah you can you can determine frequency uh, is it as direct as sort of it should be some kind of multiple of 315 or more complicated? I believe so. I believe so. Well, one over 315 or? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Okay. Yep. Um, Inverse relation equals length to frequency. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through that now, though, because it's that information is not on the top of my head. Feel free to type up, Bob. Though you're, you're, you know, you've got the stuff at your fingertips much more than I do. Um, I'm going to continue on soldering up some buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the output to the relay, and we're going to basically um, take that signal output and um, wire it up to um, each. To three of these paths. So we're going to basically like fake a button. 
So, um, it's going to be, let's see. So, we're going to need a few things for this board. We're going to need, um, we're going to need like power. So, we're going to need like five volts, and we're going to need a ground connection. And then we are basically just going to need signals. So, we're going to need the red, the yellow, and the green um, relay signals. And those will go um, to each of the inner parts of these of these paths. Uh, cool. I believe. Let me make sure that I'm not lying about that for a second. Um, I believe it was, yes, the outers are all connected together. Excellent. Just wanted to double check that. It's been a week since I looked at it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so we can basically wire in power where the battery is. We can put, you know, um, ground on this side and we can put, we can stick five volts to this little guy. I will probably put a piece of um, tape underneath that just so that because there's no battery inserted, we can't accidentally like short out power and ground. Um, and then one, two, three directly to there. And now we have, let's see, what did we get in terms of wire? We have some wire here, some stranded wire, but um, I'm kind of thinking of making it breadboard compatible right now. Um, would you mind grabbing some of these wires that have uh, the male pin on both on, ends? And at least on one. Okay. But like the kind of, side. yeah, kind of long. Um, it doesn't matter what color it's. Okay. Well, red, 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 yellow, and green would be great. Actually, yeah. These <laughs> Actually, never mind. <laughs> let's let's make our colors make sense. It's always good when your colors make sense. Okay, I'm just like, curious. What is that other circle that isn't the coin cell battery? What is that component? Oh, this guy. I yeah. believe this guy is a crystal. Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe that that creates oscillations at the correct frequency for the um for the key fob. And do we know anything about the IC? Um. Yeah. Hang on, let me let me look at the thing. I have my microscope. It's so exciting. I don't have it hooked up to video yet. That will be that will be for next time. You can just describe it to us and we'll imagine what you're seeing. Yeah, right. <laughs> so um, written on the chip. I did look it up and it's basically, and I, I looked it up also because I wanted to make sure that the specs on this chip were okay with five volts. Um, and it is, it's like a, it was a really pretty low voltage chip, like maybe two volts to 10 volts or something like that. But it is PT22, and I think that's an eight zero dash R4S. So this is the comment here. 2280 dash R4. So there's a chance that the eight might be a six. Uh because the um ink is a little bit blurred. Oh S. Remote controlling corner. Apart 
I need to go into um, yeah, I might actually be able to just use one set. We'll see. Um, no, it's, it's okay. I don't, need to, I don't need to see them for right now. Um, I'm just thinking that so we have one side. One side has the pins coming out here. And so we can use the side of our our little cables. And, um, and then if we cut them in half here and strip them, then this side will go into relay. And um, we also have, so this side also needs um, five volt power and we have just a wall work right now providing five volt. And so we'll wire the, that up to this guy and we'll, we'll put wall work, put wall work into here, wire this up to this guy. And then, yeah, do the relays. And then on the other side, we have um, one end, which will strip and solder to this, and then plug into our proto board with mail pins. So I think that that will kind of work out pretty perfectly. Just wanted to so. share real quick, we have an exciting mathematical update in the comments. Looks like the oh. antenna is roughly one eighth of the wavelength. Uh, 315 megahertz is 952 millimeters. Uh, one eighth wave equals wave. about 120 millimeters. millimeters. Yeah, there we go. That's so that's information. Thank you. Yeah, cool. So that seems right, right in line. All right. So what we will do here is we'll do D1, D0, D1, D2, red, yellow, green. And these guys, just enough to, uh, you know, be able to put into one of those small terminal blocks. And then I like to, so I like to do this trick when I can. So um, I, when I'm stripping wires and I know that they're going to go into something or that I just need them to be like nice and tidy, um, I won't just strip and completely remove that insulation when I strip. I'll just strip and separate the insulation just a little bit. And then I will take my fingers and, um, you twist the little strip part of insulation a bit, and then you just kind of like pull it out and keep twisting as you're pulling it off. And that gets you like this really nicely twisted compact wire there. It's just kind of like one of those, one of those tricks to your wires there. Oh, hello, Brent. Hey, no problem. We are, uh, we are in the middle of wiring up our key fob. So stripping wires here. So, so I'm stripping them just a little bit. Um, and then I just kind of like my, use my fingers to pull apart a little bit. And then I twist here and then I just keep twisting as I'm pulling it off. Keeping those wires steady. And then we'll do the same thing. Into it that one thing, but so on. It'll still go. So, all right, so those are now ready to go into our relays. And so I'm going to do basically the same thing. I mean, this guy just has some terminal blocks. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like that. The tip for stranded wire. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, I have definitely, I've learned so many tips and tricks along the way, mostly from amazing. Um, electronics technicians that have just been doing stuff for years and years. Um, I kind of made it a point, especially when I was really new when I like just graduated from college and stuff, um, you know, to just be a sponge and just like learn from anybody who was willing to teach me anything. And um, yeah, I learned, I learned some really excellent things from the um, technicians at the first company. They're all really quite skilled. So, 
I'm happy, happy to pass those tips and tricks along. All right. So now these are our power wires. We're using um, orange and brown for power, uh, which is not like quite as typical as red and black. But since we were already using red for the color of the traffic light on the relay, um, like using red, yellow, and, and green for those made more sense than, um, than keeping red for power in this particular instance. So we're making orange power and uh, brown brown. So um, this guy is just like a little receptacle for, um, you know, for typical barrel power plug. And uh, it's really nice in that it's also, it's going to be hard to see here because it's like molded into the plastic. But um, the plus and minus are actually called out here. And I did verify that earlier with the multimeter when this was like plugged into the wall board. So I'm going to these Quick question in the comments. Do you teach oh. any soldering classes? Ooh, so that is an excellent question. Robin, which one is getting me a screwdriver? Any here. <laughs> we need to put that on the list of uh, things to outfit our little streaming tool bench with. This is kind of our auxiliary tool bench um, because out this is like inside in the office space and then outside in the shop is where we have all of our main equipment and stuff. Although, frankly, with the addition of this microscope that's next to me, which I will show you guys more next week, uh, this bench is starting to be a nicer bench. <laughs> so it might be, a, might be a fight to use some of the stuff here sometimes. But um, anyway, soldering class. So um, we just released a how to solder video online, and which I think that you saw. And um, yes, we are, we are gearing up for doing that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's something that we have been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, and there was just like stuff that got in the way. I mean, definitely COVID was a thing. So right now I'm just, um, while I'm talking to you guys, I'm just installing these in the um, in the terminal blocks. Uh, maybe I need to strip a little bit longer on these sides because it seems like I'm not really grabbing, grabbing them. So I'll just do that, strip a little longer. Um, but yeah, so teaching teaching some soldering classes and, and basic electronics classes is something that we've wanted to do for a while. And now with the new shop space, we finally like have enough space to do that, which is exciting. Um, and, you know, of course, COVID put like a little bit of a damper on things, but, um, but really it also allowed us to kind of get a little bit of a a little bit of a break, get the right space, get stuff set up in the right space, you know, um, get our equipment sorted out because, you know, we we tend to do, we tend to work with like, you know, expensive soldering irons and stuff like that. So we wanted like good ones, but that weren't like super expensive we could teach with. And so yeah, we're like getting all that sorted out and we'll probably do some local stuff. Um, I'm also thinking of doing some online stuff uh <laughs> i think that just happened didn't it? I think I, it, it just happened that. bob the no. question was could we double over the strip wire to help screw terminals grab and yeah that's that's exactly what i was just doing so yeah now it's nicely now it's nicely grabby and so that's a trick so that's what i'm going to do on this one is strip it a little longer fold it in half put it in there um but yeah i'm also i'm also going to see about maybe doing online ones um and that's also part of the reason of like getting um this new microscope set up uh with cameras so that i'm able to stream that so that you know it because it's really helpful to see to see it from the perspective of like what you should be seeing essentially so seeing it from my perspective as i'm demonstrating things i think so yeah, I'll see about that. I think that that will be challenging, but it's a challenge I am up for tackling. And I think would be cool. So there we go. Excellent. And so now we have power and ground on this side. And we will plug in to five volts. There was a question earlier. Um, 
perhaps you determined with your multimeter. Is it um, negative or positive pin, the barrel jack? Um, like the, you can't get a repositive pin plus. So the center on this one is positive, which I believe that's what the, but that's what your question was. And yeah, it is, it is typical that the center is positive and that the outer barrel is negative ground on power plugs, but not always. For example, I have a brother label, like a little brother label printer, kind of like a relatively cheap one, 30 bucks or something, it has like a whole little keyboard on it. And, um, you know, I it did not come with a power plug. It comes, I think, with batteries or something like that. And I was like, well, that's silly. I want to like, you know, just plug it in, not worry about batteries. And like, I looked it up and the power plug, like the adapter was kind of expensive. And I was like, ah, that's stupid. I'm sure I have like the right voltage adapter around here somewhere. And sure enough, it was 12 volts, but it was 12 volts, like center ground and outside positive. And I was like, uh oh, you sneaky little bastards. <laughs> That's what you do to make everybody buy your, you know, your brand of power plug is that you make it backwards so that people who try to DIY screw up their and don't pay attention screw up their label maker. But yeah, we didn't screw up our label maker. Yeah, but now we have one that is wired backwards that has a very large piece of tape on it that's like P touch only <laughs> backwards. This will screw up anything else you plug into it. <laughs> so you know, yeah, there's that. I used to have a selectable one where you could select the voltage and the polarity, like on the on the wall ward. But I don't know yeah, how to do it. Yeah, you go like three to twelve volts and then switch the the polarity. I don't know how to do it. That that would be super useful. So now we have our electric wire wired backwards. Well, oh, I know. Oh, we could totally demonstrate the mushroom vacuum. Yeah, let's do it. So I don't know. You know, when you're shopping on Amazon for stuff and drinks and beer and stuff, things come across your feed and you're like, sure, why not? And this was one of those purchases, but legitimately I was like, this is probably going to suck, but it might. And it turns out it's <laughs> So behold, okay. our, our tiny mushroom vacuum cleaner. Oh, we have the same one. We have the same one. Ah, yes, mushroom vacuum. I'm not even kidding. It's actually really useful. Like, you, you can use it to like clean up crumbs on your dinner table as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I can't believe it. We have the exact same one, but ours is gray. Yes, I kind of love living in the future where mushroom vacuum cleaners exist. It's like, it, it makes us very happy. <laughs> Uh, when you're like, let's demonstrate the mushroom, I was like, what is going you're on? You're like, whoa, what, what is this? Like, I knew there was some here? alcohol involved on the stream, but what? Remember, <laughs> coherent. Got coherent. it. Although it's kind of funny. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, show you this really, but they have, so they have this amazing artwork on, on the can, right? But one of these, um, one of these drawings of the woman is like intentionally blurry. I was gonna say, it <laughs> yeah, looks so like, like ah, it was just Am yeah. I coherent? I don't think I'm coherent anymore. Uh, I thought it was the yeah. droplets on the can were kind of obscuring it, is what I assumed was happening. I didn't realize it was intentional. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't know if you saw in the comments, but it's, apparently everybody on, on on the chat right now has one of these things. <laughs> no way, you guys were holding out on me. <laughs> we just okay. assumed that you knew about it. I know. How did I not know about this? They are like the things of the future. I have a All question. Right. Like on the um, on that board, why is there what? Why is there like a little silk screen, like pizza piece interrupting the circle? Like, what is the purpose of that? You know, that is a great question. Um, I am not sure that there is a. I don't know. I don't know. Let me look under the microscope, which I'll be able to show you next week uh, and see if, there, if I can see anything. I don't else. know if it's like preventing something from happening, but I'm not sure what. No, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely just in silk. The trace that is underneath it is just like a normal trace. It's I mean, I would, 
think like maybe it's showing you where the break. Oh, okay. Um, but like you can see that clearly because of the yeah. lighting. So, you know, I don't know. Is it, oh, I know what it's for. Never mind. I do know. So it's to protect. Um, yeah. So the um, so it's to protect that trace a little bit more from oh, rubbing. Okay. That's what it's for. So you have uh, you have the trace the the trace that connects the center. Can you zoom in a little bit. Oh, too much, too much. Focus. Go here in. There we go. Okay. So um, so the the center, there's not a via underneath the, the center pads or anything. So the trace actually exits through that break. And so because you have um, because you have the trace exiting there and you have that button dome sitting right on top of it, you want a little bit of extra protection other than just the solder mask because you know these buttons are going to be pressed a lot and they're going to kind of like rub across that area. Wear through so, and yeah, and you don't um, want the you don't want the solder mask to rub away, and because then your button would be shorted. So the um, the little white bit is just an extra bit of silk over top of that solder mask to provide a little bit of extra durability um, and wear. I knew it must have some kind of use. I just couldn't figure it out. Yeah. So yep, that's that's what that is for. Good good job. And that probably means that there might have been a rev before that that didn't have that. Not before, but why is the, what's, with the, what's with the vias down the center of the IC? These guys? Uh, no, uh, on like it's got like oh, high low and then something down the middle. What's the point of that? These guys? Yeah. So these guys break out this side of the IC. So I'm uh, guessing that it's protesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm, I'm guessing that they have like a, a tester, like a pogo thing set up for, for the boards or something. All right. So now we're going to strip these and solder them to our pads. And let's strip a little bit. And we've got the red, yellow, and green. For the insides, for the signals, for the inside of the buttons. There we go, and then power and ground for where our battery is. Um, where am I the madness? I think I'll do the first cool. use that in a second so um you know also important to make sure that you're doing the correct correct colors to the correct side um plus is you know generally on the top of these point cell batteries and it's also uh engraved here so we know that's positive and bottom is negative uh, this is a strange phrase to utter, but I have a kind of interesting coin cell battery anecdote. Um, oh, I'm, I'm here. I had bought something off of eBay um, that was a brand new in box, but from 1995 or so, uh, PCMCA card for my little DOS palm tops that I'm obsessed with. Ooh, yeah. And, you know, I was the first person to open that box, <laughs> and I just... I, I did. I waited to open it until I had some coin cell batteries because it used CR twenty sixteen, and I only had CR twenty thirty two, or maybe it was twenty five. I can't remember, but it, it was something that I didn't have on hand. So I waited to open it until I got some because I didn't want to open it and then not get to use it because I didn't have the battery. But mm -hmm. I opened it and I tried the coin cell, and it worked, and it's still working months later. This thirty year old coin cell is working. <laughs> Like nice. perfectly, I couldn't believe it. Nice. So Excellent. what I just did there was soldered um, the um, the make the brown to the negative, the orange to the positive on the top here. The way I did that was I first pinned it a little bit, so didn't use the wire, just like put a little bit of solder on the pad, 
And then I um, added a little bit of solder to the tip of the iron and then attached the wire to the pre and pad. Um, when you have like big surface areas like this, that generally just makes it solder a little bit easier and cleaner by kind of doing that little two-step process. Um, and now I'm going to, you know, if I were fancy, I would be using Kapton tape, but it's in the shop I'm here. So I'm using blue tape because blue tape's everywhere. And that's just going to insulate it so that, um, well, for a few, few reasons, we don't accidentally short of anything. And so, um, like, you know, by dropping stuff on it or whatever. And um, and also so that now uh, you know, we can push this down and not accidentally short our power out. Cool. And so I'm going to be smart and make my other cables come out the same way. <laughs> so I'm going to solder these guys in like this. Ooh, and I can already tell that my, um, you know, I stripped a little bit too much um, for that center pad. So like if I keep that much stripped then it's definitely going to short across that pad to the outer. So I'm just going to like cut a little bit off. I'm doing it out of frame here because I don't want the little ends to be near my circuit board. Oh yeah. Vacuum cleaner. Mushroom. Love you. All right. Um, so now we'll look at this here. And yeah, that's pretty good. It could actually be a little bit shorter here. Um, by the way, I really love these. These are my favorites. Just so you know, they're no longer Paladin tools. They got bought. They're now like greenly, I think, and they're now green. Um, they're still pretty good though. And uh, what is so nice about these wire strippers? I love that. <laughs> so um, what I like is, for one thing, I like that they're bent. Um, now, it is true, I'm very sorry, left-handed people. Things are, you really do live in a right-handed world, and they're set up for kind of being used with your right hand, um, because the markings are all on this side. You could still totally, well, no, they're just not, because also the bevels are on this side for cutting. So, yeah, it would be, I think it would be challenging to use these left-handed, maybe like use them upside down like this or something, but then they're not as ergonomic. So anyway, they're very nicely ergonomic for us right-handed folks. And because um, they're like a little bit bent and they're just also well-made, they're really sharp. A lot of these cheaper strippers that are in this kind of form factor, they're just not very sharp and they're not made well here. And um, and they just, they suck. They cause you more frustration than anything else because they either don't strip or they strip too much and you break your, you cut your wire or whatever. And then like, it's also kind of nice that it's like a multi in one tool. You have like a little bit of pliers up here and then you have an actually very nice pair of wire cutters down here. So you can just easily like cut and strip all without putting your tool down, which is quite handy. What's so I mean- What's that circle? Copper? Oh, this? You what's... know, I have no freaking idea what that is for. It says copper only. If anybody knows what that is for, I would love to learn. <laughs> Maybe it's just weight reduction. <laughs> I don't know. It says copper only. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't, I mean, it's not like a, it's not stripping anything. Oh, the other nice thing about it, these is this little lock so that they just store nicely. Um, some other ones have, they have locks, some of them don't. Yeah, it's like, I just, I really don't know. I really don't know what that hole is for. And I have often wondered the same thing. Pegboard hang point. It's not crimping, it's not a pegboard hang point. But then, oh, maybe it's not the hole that's copper only. Whole strippers, that's copper only. Ah! I always thought copper only meant the hole. But yeah, you might be right about that. Like a pegboard hanger or, I don't know, a place to like, you know, attach a leash to them or something like that. Maybe a ground point? A ground point if you're doing like PSD sensitive stuff? That could be it. Um, yeah, it's interesting. But anyway, and they're also not that expensive. They're maybe like 20 bucks or something each. And this one is the 30 to 20 gauge. 
and then they also make like a uh, one for larger wires too. So anyway, Nestros. So now it's looking, well, it's looking like we're we're pretty good now for that center half. So I'm gonna like cut my other ones a little bit shorter. It's for bending hooks. For bending hooks. Oh, for like to go around like screw terminals or something like that. I could see that. Okay, there we go. That might make sense. Thank you. Thank you for that learning moment. <laughs> All right. You. And start soldering. And let's see. I think I will do the same sort of thing where I first just solder. And I'm just going to make this easy and ergonomic to tell by moving the board around so where I can easily um, stabilize it with my finger like that. I do a lot of that of like stabilizing the board with the finger and then um, and then you know soldering with other holding solder with the other fingers. So now I got this all tinned. Yeah. Update from the comments. Um, Bob's has uh, ones for solid and stranded holes oh interesting solid and stranded wires yeah that is that is true uh technically you should use like a different one different one for each um i these don't stay on them uh if they are necessarily made for your optimized for one or the other my guess is that they're like they're still inexpensive enough that you could use them for either one probably but my you know if they were to kind of uh lean towards one or the other it would probably be stranded is uh so yours is copper only um is that yeah. stranded copper and solid core something else maybe or no you really would you definitely wouldn't want to use anything harder use them for anything harder than copper if it was solid core for sure Oh, here we go. Cool. It's not flowing nicely. I'm going to thin my wire right now. I'm also using lead free solder, so I'm not quite as forgiving, but that's okay. Is there some additional sort of insulating material around there? Like it looks kind of brown. Uh, oh, this? No, it's just because I burned the insulation. Between the inner and outer circles, it looks like there's some brown that isn't part of. I don't know oh, of uh, for this for these? Yeah, between oh, the no. inner and the outer circle. Oh, it's just bare copper. It's you're just seeing the fiberglass. Yeah, it's not. Oh, uh, it's the other side. not uh, covered with solder mask. Got it. Yeah. All right. And I'm also going to add a little bit of flux. To make it flow nicer. Oh, that's K4. I think I want to go to K3. So I'm going to tin this other little guy. I think I want that to be the green one because I'm guessing that is um, C. I'm guessing that is uh, button C. Chair is squeaky. There we go. That was much nicer. And be able to pre-tin this wire a little bit. Um, sometimes it, you know, it, it depends what kind of wire you're using. It's generally a good idea to tin wires before you solder them down. Um, it just like gets you a nice clean starting point. And sometimes, especially stranded wire, because there's so much surface area, just um, kind of wants a little bit more like flux and solder in order to make a nice point. All right. That's pretty good. I'm double checking with my microscope. I love you, new microscope. So nice. Awesome. 
ones aren't too bad. Yeah, the first one, actually the first one that I didn't pin is not soldered down as nicely, the red one. So I'm gonna grab that one off and pin it. Bob's wire strip is there ambidextrous. Oh, nice. Are but they ergonomically like angled? Completely symmetric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like, I understand why they make the ones that are completely symmetric. They're not as ergonomic, but they're also not like preferentially ergonomic, right? I just have those really cheap ones where, you know, the gauge is how you hold it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't have any of these fancy settings or anything. It's just. <laughs> oh, yeah, the single ones. Those are yeah. actually really good for, um, for larger, like for cable jacketing. We use those for cable jacketing. All right, and now since I like flex stuff up, I'm just like using a little bit of isopropyl clean stuff off. All right, cool. So now we got, now we got our everything soldered up. So it might be time to plug stuff in and see if we let the smoke out. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. If smoke were to come out, which which area are we thinking smoke? Oh, that's interesting. I just noticed. Huh. Well, I hope this one works. There's, um, I believe it's an inductor on this one because it's sort of like green in color. It's a through hole um piece through hole component and the um you know that kind of like epoxy plasticky coating on it is kind of cracked like it got smushed or something so hopefully this thing will hopefully this receiver will work it's um kind of see it a little bit right there like it looks like it's been damaged a tiny bit so i don't know we'll see all right, taking stuff over to the other camera. Awesome. And unplugging from the wall for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so let's see. I'm going to also unplug from this power bank. So working on it with everything completely unplugged. And now let's see. Um, I'm just, I'm thinking right now because the relay boards also need, also technically need power. And I haven't really accounted for that right now. Um, so I think I know what I will do. Do, though. Okay. All right. So I'm going to unplug these relay boards and I'm going to kind of plug them in to the other half of my breadboard that's not being used. So um, I'm right now basically like baking the break in, um, in the between the two halves. I mean, there is actually a break here. They're all on one breadboard, but they're the two sides of the breadboard is, are isolated. Okay, so buttons are still into you. You guys are still into you. Okay. And then these guys. Do you want me to hold the camera over? So, uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, we'll try that out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. So right now, um, these are what I just moved. So we have these two halves of the breadboard, which are isolated from each other. And um, the relays are now into the isolated section. So I'm going to power this guy um, off of the five volt 
wall wart and um, and make sure that power gets to all of the relays as well as our receiver. So I'm going to, let's see, power is already being routed to these guys through that cable. So I'm just going to unplug the signal from each of these screwdriver very quickly. This guy. Um, yeah, because that'll be that'll be easiest since we have the bare wires here that they can just go straight in. We could all, you know, route it through the breadboard as well. It doesn't really matter, but since we kind of set up for this way, we'll continue on this way. Um, and yeah, let's see. Okay, we might we might we'll end up doing something a little different with that power, but that's okay. So we'll put this guy in. I know now we have two red signals going into the relay, but that's all right. That in enough? Yeah, not really. Okay. So we also might have to grab our wire strippers real quick and do the little trick of uh, holding over. Um, you know, stripping it long, folding it over in order to get enough wire into that um, terminal lock. So I'm just trying to remember our overall big picture plan here. Mm -hmm. the, the, the halfway point is it is it Arduino button transmitter on one side and receiver relays on the other side? Um, yes. It, okay. Yeah, Arduino... So Arduino goes to the buttons and and transmitter, and then we have the receiver to the relays. Got it. Yep. Yeah, so the Arduino and will still, you know, all of the game stuff will still happen locally in the controller. Um, you know, the sensing of buttons, the determining, you know, whether or not it was the right button press, all that stuff. That all happens in the controller. The only signal that the controller sends out is relays. But could could you have done a button transmitter on one side and then receiver Arduino relays? Could have, but like then I don't know, like then basically the um, the traffic lights we knew were going to be in a less accessible location, yeah. right? Because yeah. they're big and you might, yeah. you want them high so that they don't like blind you. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to be able to access the Arduino. And then, so that's why we decided to keep it, um, keep it at the controller. All right, so now we are attaching these. Well, you, you could set the Arduino up so that you could flash it via button press on the other one, on the other end. Would have. Transmit so, the new firmware by pressing buttons. It would be the ultimate <laughs> Simon game. Right. Um, yeah, and like I did look into, I was like, oh, well, we could just, you know, add an Arduino that has Bluetooth or something like that, you know. But um, honestly, I was looking at then like, you know, having an Arduino on both sides, essentially. Yeah. Because you know, and then that was, that got kind of expensive. And I was like, well, there's gotta be some other cheaper way of just making this wireless. And then, um, you know, I found those pretty cool, you know, four button key fobs with a uh, receiver on Adafruit. I think they were like six or seven bucks. Oh, wow. So yeah, like great, great cheap way to add wireless capability to a project. 495. Four ninety five, five dollars. Nice. All right. Yellow one in there. Got the green one in there. And like, I 
like this wasn't clear like this is this is the first time we're doing this so we're doing like live project <laughs> stuff and um you know if something doesn't behave as expected or if we let the smoke out or something like that that's sometimes what happens and that is part of making a project and it's sometimes the best way to learn <laughs> right and it is sometimes the best way to learn um okay so now what i think we're gonna do here with power is um i think we are going to unplug from here um would you mind finding uh, mail to mail ones of these? Yes, a lot. Um, it doesn't matter. They can be they can be whatever length. They can be the short or the long. Yeah. Um, and hang on, I might need. Uh, so that will go into there, but I will also still need to power this. Uh, and then also, oh, we have some female to male ones. Yeah. So just mail to mail. Yeah. Two? Uh, yeah, just two. Okay. Yeah. So the barrel jack is the relay power supply now? Yes, it is the relay and receiver power supply. And receiver, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, I, I forgot that I had to power the relays as well. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to split out the power. And make it power everything. Um, so let's see if we do that, that, that. We can do this here. And a little easier on myself. There, that, there. And look up our board. Ground is on top. My volts is on the bottom. There and there. Okay. Cool. So we have all of our connections hooked up to the receiver now. So all we need is our um, little extender for the barrel jack. Oh, and we'll also need some, ooh, some yellow and orange little uh, Redboard jumpers. So, but meanwhile, what I'll do is I will get started on the other side. So now we have our outputs. Yes, brown and orange. When you said uh, the the jumper color, is that based on their length or their color? Um, color? No, right now they're not. Um, right now they're just they're just these guys, the, oh, okay. uh, Dupont style. So it's just it. pure, um, you know, pure color. Got it, got um, it. But the other ones, the so I need some of these guys. Yeah, let's see them. Yeah, in order to route power. Um, if you could grab me like one of those little kits that has these style of jumpers, I need the orange and yellow tiny staple guys. Yeah, that's, that's what I was asking. Yeah, I didn't know if you yeah, knew, yeah. knew the breadboard to color translation off the top of <laughs> Yes. So now I will hook up the power input. Power input to this rail on the breadboard, which is not tied to any other rail. So um, obviously not while you're working on it, but it yeah. might be good if we can Let get a, a little bit of a close up once it's uh, once it's done. Yeah, totally. Cool. Once it's done and before I plug it in and let the smoke yeah out. and while <laughs> the smoke is optimal. Yeah. All right. So this is just the uh, the little power jack dongle. So that will go to our wall wart, and now we're going to. So that's powering the the strip that's down this side of our um, of our breadboard, and uh, let's see. So on this side, I kind of brilliant. There's some things that I'm that I don't like about 
solderless breadboards, and I don't like how they're how these style of jumper are color coded based on length. It makes sense. It makes sense while you're building it, and then it ceases to make sense at all. <laughs> so I, I much I wish that there were kits available that um, just had a variety of lengths and colors, so that you could color code according to signal, which is generally how you wire things. So right now I'm just feeding power and ground to each of these little cables that are going to the relays. So I got the red one done. And I'm attaching power now to the yellow. Go on. Oh, no, that was good. Good. I was hoping I didn't accidentally mush it over there. And then this is round. I just noticed in the comments a request to uh, turn off the 120 volts. I, I think we... Oh, we did that. We totally we did, did that. that. <laughs> did that first comment. thing. Cool. <laughs> Unplugged that sucker. <laughs> yes. I mean, we live on the edge here, but not that much. <laughs> um, the barrel jacket's uh, five volts, right? Yeah. Any reason yep. not to just do like a USB breakout and use some USB plug that you've probably got lying around? Um, not at all. I mean, that would be fine, but this is, remember that we don't have a USB source on this side. This is the, um, the traffic light side. Yeah, yeah, so, no, I meant more like, you know, you were talking about cost savings and oh, cost, like did, just you, for did you have to buy a five volt wall wart, whereas you I might have like a not. four charger. Okay. I did, because I have, you know, like a good hoarder, I have piles of power supplies from Same. I have like every one <laughs> of my others. like answering yeah. machines and stuff, power supply in case I need that oh, one, you I, know. <laughs> I think I have a power supply from like an old phone. So yes, I probably <laughs> literally have an answering machine. Answering machine. Got it all. Oh, and one more. I need the one for so I did all of the relays there and then I need the one that goes um out to the receiver. And then we'll be all wired up. On the on the traffic light side of things, there plus the plus round two round. There was a uh, sigh of relief in the comments uh, on the confirmation. Oh, about the <laughs> about the one twenty volt. Yes, and now I'm just what I'm doing is I'm just double checking to make sure that I got all everything in all the right holes, that plus is going to red, that um, ground is going to black, because that's how I have it uh, wired up on these little cables. And we got the orange and we got the brown. So that side all looks good. So now we need to attach our transmitter here and our buttons to the Arduino side of things. And this already has power routed down it. So I should just be able to pick it up from um, from actually one of these spots that I just took one of the relay wires out of. So that's power. And that's ground. And then we have red. It's going to be up here. That's the red signal. And then we have the yellow signal here in the middle. And then we have the green here on the end. And I'm going to look at it from another angle to make sure that I have everything lined up in the proper rows. Looking good. Make sure those two boards aren't like touching each other. <laughs> I have a question about the uh, the transmitter situation. Mm, um, yes. So what it was doing before you put this um, wireless solution in the middle mm -hmm. is, you know, it's just going, it's just, you know, jamming it high continually to turn that light on, right? Um, As opposed to like a single signal. So do we know for sure that that's how the transmitter works? That it's just going to, if you hold the button down, it's going to continually transmit, you know, it's not going to be like once every second or something. 
Oh, interesting. That I see what you're saying. Um, you know, we really kind of don't. Okay. So we're <laughs> going to find that out. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, wow, so this is really going to work with no additional programming. I, I gonna... think it should. I think it should. Oh, okay. um, and if it doesn't, you know, we'll learn something, right? I mean, yeah, I, I don't. Um, I don't have much information about the key fob or how yeah. it works. So, you know, some of it is guessing and we might have guessed wrong and that's all right. Yeah, I'm just thinking in terms yeah. of its original use as like a garage door opener. Right. I don't know if it would transmit a thousand times saying open the garage and then open it just open, like open, ignores open, open, them open, open, or. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we're gonna find out. Yeah, all right. We're gonna find out. I mean, I guess I could have like fully probed it out, you know, um, before kind of taking it apart and wiring it in. What's fun with that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we got everything wired up. I think we're good. Um, sure, yeah. We will we will do that. So First test is powering up the Arduino side of things. All right. So our LED on the transmitter kind of like flashed once, probably to indicate that like we're powered up, hopefully, and that was it. So nothing bad happened. Yay. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to power up the five volt side first. All right, nothing bad happened there. That's good. Mm -hmm. Plugging in the power. Like, all right, we'll see. Whoa. Oh. Interesting. Okay. So something's happening. Let's see. Oh, okay, the wrong one is flashing. Okay, hang on. So I can see which one is supposed to be flashing because the buttons light up yeah. as well. So let me see. So that's supposed to be yellow. Yeah, we might, we might, here, hang on a second. Ooh. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So it might be time to like further get a scope on this or a multimeter to find out exactly what it's doing. Um, it seems He keeps telling me that I'm losing the game here. It seems that when yellow is lit up that the green light is going on. So I'm not sure if we just have like a bad supposition about which buttons go to which um, things. Or, and like some of them aren't going on. The green one doesn't seem to be going on. So I'm still able to like play the game with just the buttons, essentially. And yeah, the yellow one is definitely corresponding to to the. Um, oh, I just I it just timed out. I didn't do it fast enough. So the yellow one is definitely corresponding to the green. The green is not really corresponding to anything, and I'm not sure what the red is doing. Let's see if we can figure that out. Oh, now it seems to be behaving a little bit erratically. OK, so the red just flashed and it's not doing anything. So yeah, I think we might have an issue with um, like the type of signal that's being trans transmitted. Um, or it might also kind of be the length of the signal. I can see that the, um, that the yellow button is 
definitely lighting up for longer than the associated traffic light is. So, yeah. Well, we shall we shall see. Let me see if I can. I don't have a scope handy that I can like drag out here really quick. Um, but let me see what I can see with a multimeter. I don't know if I have one with the other style of probes handy. Do you want the yeah, can you grab the ones with the yeah with the non non clicky maybe. Um, is there what's happening on the LEDs on this on the uh, transmitter and receiver themselves? Is, is that lighting up even when the lights aren't lighting up on the traffic light? No, the um, the the um, the the LED on the transmitter is definitely corresponding to um, like in an output a relay output essentially. So it's definitely like the LED on the transmitter is sort of behaving like I would think it would. Yeah. Um, but because I mean, don't forget one scenario was everything we did is perfect. And there was a problem with the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what I am going do is I'm going to probe a relay signal here and I'm keeping it on the low voltage side here. Oh. Um, so let's see where I can do that. Kind of easily, easily and safely. Let's see if I can actually, might not be able to get it inside the breadboard, but we shall see. Uh, I don't know if Robin's nearby, but it might be. Cool to zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, not, not much to see yet. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be interesting to see where you're probing and why where that's in place. And... Yeah, totally. So let's see. Let's see if I can see that. I mean, this just looks cool. <laughs> so first, what I think I'm going to do is in here. Is that is the green glow that we can see some LEDs on the relays or what is that? Yeah, those are LEDs on the relay board. They're just the power power um, LEDs. Yeah, on the relay board. So yeah. Um I'm seeing if I can I have like these really fine tip probes, which I can sometimes get into breadboards with, depending upon the, yeah. the breadboard, but we'll see. Okay, yeah, that's that's working. So I'm definitely getting, yep, I'm definitely getting an output where I expect it to go to the transmitter. So on the other side of things, see what I'm getting as a Signal on the receiver. Now I'm gonna have to. Mm, gonna have to. Okay. Hmm. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, I just I don't seem to be getting a red output to the receiver. Interesting. So. Just to say uh, a bonus learning opportunity. Um, yeah. Maybe worth saying, you know, what's happening on the multimeter? What's it, how's it set up? What's it doing? What's it telling um, you? I'm just looking at voltage right now on the multimeter because, um, you know, that's the easiest thing to see. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm probing what I believe should be the red. Um, the red output signal from the receiver to the relay. So, but of course I have to also kind of wait until, um, wait until we actually kind of get a red, which that one should have been, but it was, but I didn't get any voltage there. And I'm also not seeing the corresponding LED light up on the relay. 
Um, and I'm not sure if I should be seeing an LED light up on the receiver <clears throat> either. Um, you know, the other potential possibility is that these might just be too darn close together. Um, <laughs> it's possible that the receiver, that the um, transmitter might be kind of like swamping the receiver. Yeah. Um, so that could be another issue that we have. We might actually need to do a little bit more separation. Um, so yeah, um, I think the other thing that would help troubleshoot is uh, for me to do a little bit of reprogramming and make it a consistent pattern every time, just do like a known test pattern. So maybe like, even not have it be in game mode, but just have it um, like light up, yeah. light up the different, the different. Um, it copy um, you instead of you copying it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think that those things will help help troubleshoot as well as actually getting an oscilloscope on this so that I can actually see the signals that are being generated by the receiver on the output because you know it's quite. Um, it's quite possible that some of our assumptions are wrong there. I don't see any faults with the wiring. I don't think we've made any, I don't think I've made any mistakes in what I intended to do. So I think all of that is good. Um, but yeah, you know, we're definitely, definitely having a bit of a challenge um, in figuring out, you know, why, why the output of the receiver isn't, you know, kind of behaving like we think it should be behaving. And that's also why we have, I got two of those, um, uh -huh. two of those uh, key fobs. So here, I'm gonna, gonna go to the other, to the other camera here. So I also got two of those key fobs and um, that is, here, I'll just maybe do this. Um, and that is also handy because now I have one that is working that I can take part. <laughs> so we can use that as, um, you know, as our control and see, you know, make sure that the that the button presses correspond to the outputs that we think they correspond to, because that could be one area of, of problem. And then we can see exactly how those outputs behave according to the button. Okay, your your vocals have gone little a little, little low, little suboptimal. It's like when you're talking. Hang on, let me yeah. let me bring my microphone back near me. <laughs> as long as you were talking loud and in a certain direction, it was good. Yeah. Like I couldn't like there was a certain way that you would move, and it would be a little murky. So another new thing for next week is going to be like a little wireless lab mic, so that I can move around and nice yeah, and vocals can be the same. Everything sounds good now, by the way. Good. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. We broke our game. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's all good. And uh, I think we'll be able to figure it out. And if it turns out that, you know, the way that the that the um, that the key fob works is does not, you know, really correspond to the way that we have it wired up in the game, then we, you know, we could go to a different wireless setup and like have Arduinos on either end or, you know, do like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something like that. We could definitely do that. Um, I was just hoping that there would be like a kind of like simple one-to-one -one receiver wow. transmitter setup that would that would work for this. So yeah. I think I think that's I think that's a good stopping point for this evening. I don't think I can really uh, make much more progress well, that you could see. <laughs> I think having a light, whether it was the correct one or not, light up was pretty exciting and something worked. No magic smoke was let out. Yeah. You know, I call that a success. And another <laughs> reminder, a reminder from the comments that uh, that that circuit breaker uh, should be on the shopping list. On the twenty volt. Yeah, you know, I think actually my my cheap way of doing that, um, which I can I can very easily add in, is just um, add a power strip with a breaker in it. That's a very cheap and easy way of adding some protection to the 120 volt side of things. So yeah, that's a good point. And, and that is something that I will do for next time. Yep. Awesome. 
Yep, yep. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I will do a little bit of troubleshooting on this on my own and have an update for you next week. Uh, may or may not come back to the specific project next week, uh, also depending upon what I find. Um, but next week, what I am hoping to do is to have the microscope camera set up and do a surface mount soldering kit. Yee! So I was thinking um, just for for the first one of probably doing the the PSI hate kit that that we have that I made for for Valentine's Day <laughs> and put one of those together. So because I'm pretty I'm pretty familiar with that one, so it, it'll be you know no no surprises and pretty easy there. And yeah, can can see how that looks in beautiful high res zoomed in microscope definition. So yeah. When is uh when is sweetest day? Maybe it should <laughs> When is what? When is when is the even more ridiculous holiday of sweetest day? You know, it's like Valentine's Day for people who Valentine's Day isn't cheesy enough for. It's like a like very, very definitely Hallmark uh holiday version of Valentine's Day as if it wasn't enough already. Oh, I, I have not heard of this. What, oh what gosh. This? Yeah. Do I, do I want to know? Maybe no, I no, 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 no. Like kind of like... Everything that you hate about Valentine's Day elevated exponentially to just pure commercialism and made upness and yeah. And when is that day? Well, that's what I was wondering. I think like it's probably to be cynical, it's probably like, you know, <laughs> six months away from Valentine's Day to, to pick up the card and chocolate sales or whatever. So I didn't know mm -hmm. if it was coming up. Well, I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like there has to be like an alone and totally happy with your cat day. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy's party. <laughs> that's uh, uh, puppy ball, maybe. <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome. Well, I think that we shall end it here. And. Um, Definitely see you next week. And yeah, we'll do some fun stuff under the microscope. At least that's the plan. Awesome. awesome. Thank you guys for joining. <laughs> Bye. I don't know if I can find the mouse to end this damn thing. Here we go. <laughs> it's on some monitor somewhere. <laughs>